CataractCoach.com, a surgical PI, scissors versus the vitrector. So two different ways of performing a surgical peripheral iridectomy. Now this patient has some closed angle glaucoma. What an angry red eye this is. Unable to get a laser peripheral iridotomy. So the surgeon's taking the patient to the operating room. So there's a pair of these being made, but notice it's extra wide. It's probably about one and a half to two millimeters in width and a good long tunnel length so it seals up. Now, this can be done with a retrobulbar block or peribulbar block to keep the patient comfortable. Here's just a small dollop of viscoelastic, not too much, just to give yourself a little bit of room. Now, you can go inside there, and you want to grab that iris there towards the periphery with some forceps and pull it out of the eye. So here's using some forceps, probably two forceps. Pull it out of the eye just a tiny bit. And here's some van scissors making a little cut. That's a pretty big cut. And now you've completed your peripheral iridectomy. And you can see it goes back in the eye there. And it looks like a small hole, but now look, it keeps expanding. So the danger in this method is that you can make a hole a lot bigger than you're expecting. So that's okay. That's going to certainly be patent. And it's going to allow good flow of aqueous. And now what do you do? Well, eye pressure is pretty normal now. You can now flush out any of the remaining viscoelastic that you put in there. And you can seal up the incision. Now, make sure you really seal that incision. And that's why you want to have a longer tunnel length. Yes, the bleeding there is because, again, it's a very hot, angry eye, very inflamed eye. And the patient had to have this procedure done in order to resolve that issue with the glaucoma, acute glaucoma attack here. So here's hydrating up the incision. Make sure it's absolutely watertight. And now you know how to do a surgical peripheral iridectomy with scissors. Hey, want to learn a lot more about cataract surgery? Our free website, cataractcoach.com. Check it out. Listen to our weekly podcast and follow me on Instagram. I promise you'll learn a lot. Now let's change gears here to a peripheral iridectomy or iridotomy made with the 23-gauge vitrectors. So here's a little paracendesis, a little bit of viscoelastic just to deepen the AC. Here's another pair on the opposite side. Now in this case, we have a resident who's operating who's going to do two peripheral iridectomies. So here's the 23-gauge vitrector going in. There's the infusion. You want to make sure that infusion tube is not going to obstruct your view like it was a little bit earlier. And now going in with a cutter. Now think about it. What settings do you want here? You want it on IA cut. So position one on the foot pedal is irrigation, two is aspiration, three is cut. You want a very, very low cut rate. At most, 50 or 100 cuts per minute. That'll give you about one cut, maybe two cuts per second. So come here, aspirate first, position two on the pedal to see the iris pull into the port. And now once you see the iris is put in the port of the tractor, which is there face down, go on position three with your foot pedal, a couple of clicks, one or two clicks only, and now you've got a nice small peripheral iridectomy or iridotomy there. Beautifully done. So easy. Now you can switch hands and do it the other way. Now in this case, the surgeon is going across the eye because the AC is deep enough. You could also just do it in the subincisional space. As soon as you put the vitrector in the eye, go bevel down and try to go towards the periphery here and make the peripheral iridectomy or iridotomy. So now look, infusion going in on the left hand. That's 23 gauge infusion cannula. And again, you're going to do low vacuum here, maybe 200 millimeters of mercury of vacuum and a very, very low cut rate of 100 cuts per minute or less. So you want only one or two cuts per second. So going in here now, coming across the eye, and you want a higher infusion pressure here to keep that EC as deep as you can. So in this case, you're not doing a cataract 32, you're just doing the um, iridectomy. You can see the surgeon's having a little bit of a tough time getting inside there, but there we go. And then surgeon sitting superiorly, we're going to make both these peripheral iridectomies in that kind of superior um, area. So now pivot that hand. The right hand has to be pivoted more, 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 more until there we go. Now get out in the periphery. Again, position two now for a little bit of vacuum. Port down on the vitrector. Make sure you see that iris suck into the port. And now once you see the iris in there, one or two clicks by putting, putting your foot into position three, and that should be sufficient. Now, you can make it a little bit larger, but there's really no need. So I think these two small peripheral iridectomies or iridotomies are perfectly fine for the patient, and that's really going to solve your issue. Now, why did you do this instead of using a laser, a YAG laser in the clinic to do a peripheral iridotomy? With the, you can do either. In some cases, like you saw in this first case here today, the eye is too inflamed, the cornea is too cloudy. You can't get the laser to actually penetrate the iris tissue, and that's okay. Do these surgical approaches. Now, in this case, with two small pairs and TCs, these seal up very, very easily. By the way, look at the top of the screen. You notice that the speculum is actually not under that lower lid there. 
But good case here. Now you know how to do both types of surgical peripheral iridectomy. Here's the OCT image showing on our the one with the vitrector, beautifully open, and that looks great. Hey, remember, check out our weekly podcast. There's so much more to learn. I promise you will love it. You're missing out. Check it out everywhere you find podcasts.